Hi there, Adopt-A-Plot volunteers. Welcome to the Lanata Canyon Adopt-A-Plot. As you'll notice during this COVID time frame, um, the entrance to the Adopt-A-Plot at the end of the cul-de-sac here has a notice that it is closed. And with your parking pass and your ID badge, you have access to the reserve. So I'm here with Duke. Uh, he's gonna be our little mascot for the video. And what we're gonna do is just sneak right under this fence, but we're gonna keep the tape intact here. And if you guys are interested, you can check out our interpretive sign that has some history about Agua Margo Reserve. And so you're gonna walk with me to the plot. If this is your first time, this ought to be very helpful. And I can go ahead and talk about a couple of the plants along the way. And so first off, we have tons of different plants that are growing out here. Uh, many of them are invasive species that we're gonna be actively working to remove and other native plants that we want to keep in the ground. This plant, cliff aster, with these serrated leaves is often confused for being a weed and it's actually a native plant that grows on the bluffs. We have so much of it out here and we haven't even planted any. Um, it's amazing that it's self-recruiting and in a bit here I can show you the flower for that plant but we have a beautiful distraction right here a field of poppies over to your right hand side walking. These also came up on their own and it's incredible the way that the poppies can self-recruit. So this is the cliff aster when it goes to flower. Most often than not, you're gonna see this plant without the flower, so I don't want you to rely on that. However, you can see it has this white flower head with the purple on the bottom. We do have some wonderful native plants that we planted last year, and this is the first section. So in your handout, um, all the plants by this yucca tree are section one is what we're calling it. The numbers don't have any true meaning in terms of priorities or anything, but it's just a nice way if you want to say in your reports, I worked in section one to remove X species. So this is one of our native plants. This is called bush sunflower. It has these wonderful yellow ray flowers, round center, and these perfectly ovate shaped leaves. One of the weeds that we only have in this section really is called bristly ox tongue. It has this little bumpiness to it just like a tongue and it's actually sticky if you try. You can stick this to your clothing and it works. You might recognize these weeds. These are called dandelions and like the cliff aster they do have these serrated leaves but this of course is a non-native weed that we can remove. This is a larger version of our black mustard, our top priority plant to remove on this site. You will see they have these dainty four petal yellow flowers and these very large um, bumpy leaves that can be rough to the touch. And there's one main stalk where the whole thing is growing. This plant has allelopathic chemicals that actually inhibit the growth of other plants. And so it is very important to remove the black mustard from the site um, because it'll keep these other native plants like the bush sunflower from growing. Another native plant, it's called bladder pod. And these pods are actually shaped like little bladders, how it gets its name. And it has these gorgeous uh, yellow trumpet shaped flowers. This one's just budding now. This is one of the most noxious weeds on the site. This one is called fennel and it, as many people know, it has this licorice smell to it. It looks a little bit like dill um, is what you might uh, compare it to. We also unfortunately have a lot of volunteers who mistake it for this native plant over here called sagebrush. Now notice sagebrush has a woody structure to it, not a bulb like the fennel here. And sagebrush has a totally different smell to it. It's very pleasant and that's how it gets its name. So go ahead and smell the plant when in doubt. We have a few plants right here that are not very common, but are weeds. So we have the milk thistle here that could be removed as well as this radish, 
Radish also has four petals um, and they're purple plants and they have these rough leaves. This is one of our native plants that is considered both in the coastal sage scrub plant community and the riparian community, aka streamside community. So we have planted quite a bit of this. It's called mule fat. So mule fat has these dainty white flowers here. It is in the sunflower family because anything with a flower head is in that family. And the leaves on this plant are literally translated to willow-like. So it might remind you of a small shrubby willow. Now this plant is called purple sage. It's a true sage. Uh, and so it is in the mint family. It's very aromatic, smells wonderful. The stems are actually in a square shape if you look at them closely from a cross section. And the leaves are opposite. Now this is certainly a plant to be aware of and it is not appropriate for volunteers without proper safety gear to remove it. It's called carnation spurge and so it grows low to the ground and it has these uh, yellow kind of flowers. Um, it does have toxic resin in it that can be harmful if you touch your eyes with your hands. Now this plant is one of our more charismatic native plants and it grows like a vine. A lot of folks also confuse this as a weed and it's not. Uh, this is our wild cucumber or mara or manroot. It's called manroot because the roots can actually grow to the size of a man. And these are the cucumbers. They're like little football shaped spiky balls, very spiny to the touch and they have large seeds on the inside. Unfortunately, don't get too excited. It's not an edible cucumber, but it is helpful for our ecosystem. I've decided to walk through the site, but you can continue to take the trail all the way up for your reference. And so we're going to walk back a little bit further. We're walking past these bladder pods. One of our goals is to remove weeds from right around native plants. And so you might take up all these mustard right around the bladder pod and make what we call a halo. So like a one foot ring around a native plant that's safe. So we planted this plant two seasons ago. We always plant in the winter time. So these plants are starting to mature, which is very exciting. Um, the area down here in section one goes up to this rock pile in the back here. And then it kind of continues close to the trail. And so that's the full area. So our priority here is to remove right around the native plants. Typically these woody shrubs that we're seeing here. This is a buckwheat for your reference. And once we have removed around all the native sh shrubs, just doing the halos, we can then tackle all this stuff in the middle. And so you can see this is some of the bristly oxen we talked about a little earlier. And we have another plant that is super invasive. It's probably second to the mustard on this site and it's called tocolote. And it looks kind of fuzzy now, um, but it'll turn into a star thistle that's very uh, pokey to the touch. But right now it has kind of this serrated leaf um, growing into kind of a rosette. And so this plant can be removed in full scale. If you want to have one plant that you remove for the full day, you can pick tocolote, or you can do a full section of black mustard up in the back there, section three. Now this is another native species highlight that I want to mention as something you should be careful around. These are annual wildflowers and so if you step on them, they won't survive. They're not as hardy as our shrubs. So this one is called lupin. It's in the pea family and I'm sure you can see the correlation because look at those pea pod looking seed uh, capsules right here. They'll actually look like little peas. Um, beautiful. Uh, pea-shaped purple flowers, really stunning this time of year. So we have quite a bit of them coming up. Let's just watch out for them. Also, the leaves are very distinct. So if you don't see the flowers, look for these hand-shaped leaves. They're literally called digitate. Super cool. Real quick, this is another invasive species. It's not as invasive or noxious as some of the others I mentioned, but it is called yellow sweet clover and it's something we can remove if it's in our way. Now I want you all to be aware that a lot of our more mature uh, sagebrush, for example, but this happens with our other species too, 
have decided to have babies. And that's how we have successful restoration here is when the plants that we plant start to recruit on their own, we literally have a carpet of sagebrush seedlings growing like a nursery out here. And so we certainly want to, one, protect them. And two, if you see a section like this, you can flag it off with tape uh, like Evan has done here, or you can use these flags. We have some flags available. I'm gonna finish taking you guys up to the top here. You can just take the whole trail up to the back. On your way to the end, you'll see this beautiful filled in section of sage and bush sunflower. And this was planted about three years ago by one of our Girl Scout volunteers, Sarah Reeves and her family and her volunteers. And they've done an incredible job at getting this going. Now this is probably gonna be one of the trickier things for you. So coming from the water tank, I am headed north towards the stream or to your left hand side if you're facing the water tank. And I'm working my way to the back here where our tools are located. And so we have a couple wheelbarrows. Uh, one can be used for hauling water because it has a functional wheel. Uh, we also have several tools we're going to organize at the end of this video. Uh, what we want is maybe a couple more of these caps. They keep things nice when it rains. If we don't have caps, though, we can turn these over to protect the tools inside. And we have uh, watering cans, so many shovels, lots of different kinds of hand tools here. So we've got fresh gloves for you all, um, lots of hand sanitizer options sickles this one is called a hand weeder perfect for some of our long rooted plants um, and flags as well if you guys want to flag any new seedlings weed that's common here is the stork's bill it's called stork's bill because when it matures uh, these look like little stork's bills like the bird now I'm gonna walk you guys back to the last section, which actually needs the most work. The first two sections, we can focus more on haloing and getting the remainder of the weeds and kind of looking for perfection in a lot of ways. The one back here, as I'm walking along all these clovers, is actually struggling because there's fields and fields of the black mustard. All right, so I've made my way to the very last section, which we're gonna be prioritizing because we hope to plant this area. And I'm sure you can see the big problem here is we have black mustard covering this whole area up to the creeks and up to the more mature sagebrush in the back here. And so uh, you can see here, this is a pile of recently pulled black mustard. And what we can do is create a trail going back this way and we'll create that trail by removing black mustard up to the rocks and at the end of the rocks there we can throw the black mustard off that the goats can right so the black mustard might be beautiful this time of year i'm sure you guys are thinking um, but nine months out of the year it is this desiccated stuff that covers the hillsides and is a huge fire hazard so once you guys have created a trail to the edge here where the rocks are you can walk all the way up to the rocks or walk your wheelbarrow up to the edge here. And then you can try to toss down to the bottom here where the goats will be able to eat the weeds. Thank you all for watching this video. The last thing that I have to go over is how do we record your efforts? And the way that we do that is by email. So because the program is so independent, we rely so much on your communication. So what you can do is after each workday or after a couple of workdays, you can send me an email and that might include things like before and after pictures, pictures of you working out there or plants that you need identified. And you can have a brief description of what you did, for example, removing black mustard from area three and um, include anyone who helped you with their first and last names. You guys will all need volunteer hub accounts at pvplc dot volunteerhub.com and I'll take all that information the date how many hours how many people and we'll put that into our system that you can use towards any service that you might require or it might just be fun to know you contributed so many hours over the year thank you so much for your efforts 
This could not be possible without all of you.